Hello, welcome to the presentation of the paper Generic Plaintext Equality and Inequality Proofs Prepared for Financial Cryptography 2021. My name is Octavio Perez Kempner and I will be delivering this talk on behalf of my co-authors Olivier, Xavier and Pascal. The goal of this talk is to present zero knowledge protocols for plaintext equality and inequality which are based on generic randomization properties. To begin with, I will discuss the motivation of this type of proof and introduce a warm-up example to illustrate the protocols that we considered. Then, I will mention the randomization properties that we formalized to build our protocols. After that, I will present a subset of the proposed protocols and discuss the relation with the randomization properties. Before concluding, I will present a comparison on the performance of our protocols with respect to customized variants when considering LGML encryption. Finally, I will comment on possible directions for future work on this topic. So, when we talk about plaintext equality and inequality, we consider two ciphertexts. Here and after represented as seeded boxes, like in this picture. The problem of plaintext inequality consists in determining whether two boxes contain the same message. Similarly, the problem of plaintext inequality consists in determining whether the boxes contain a different message. In this sense, our aim was to build zero-knowledge protocols that could be used with different encryption schemes and be therefore generic. And why so? Well, as we will see shortly after, there are many applications of this type of proof, and for most of them it happens to be the case that these proofs are used as sub-protocols. For these reasons, they need to be integrated with different pieces of software. Customized proof, relying on a specific properties of a particular scheme or in non-standard assumptions, could generate conflicts when integrated them with more complex protocols. On the other hand, generic protocols overcome this limitation in the sense that they can be used in a plug-and-play manner and be integrated as templates. As long as the overhead from using generic protocols is not considerably bigger with respect to the existing customized variants, they can be a competitive alternative. Examples of applications where one can find this type of protocols include voting ones like pre voter with uh, Elgamal or Palier variants, reputation systems, cloud-based applications, and more in general, one can also think about protocols with broadcasting phases requiring to send encrypted data. Here, one could use non-interactive variants to prove a subset of parties that they have received the same or different message. It's also worth to notice that activities requiring regular storage of data in backup servers or blockchains may also benefit from this type of proofs. Let us go to the example now. Here we have Alice and Bob, and Alice would like to convince Bob that the content of two sealed boxes is different. This without disclosing any other information to Bob. We will assume that Alice has access to a key that opens both boxes. As you can see, this is the case of a plaintext inequality proof. A protocol to solve this would go as follows. Considering that apart from the color of the boxes, they are identical, both can choose one of the boxes and paint it with a different color. This would be analogous to randomizing a ciphertext under the standard definition for randomizability. Let's say that Bob paints uh, one of the boxes with blue, and so he will send this box to Alice and ask her which one was the box that he painted. Since Alice has the key, she can open it and compare it with the two boxes that she has. Let's say she compares with the red one. If both contain the same message, then Alice knows that both painted the red box and tells him that. If the boxes contain a different message, then Alice concludes that both painted the yellow box and answered with yellow. Now, in this example, we assume that Bob is an honest person, which means that he either paints the red box or the yellow box, but not any other box. Also, Observe that if Alice doesn't know the key, as the boxes are identical, then the best she can try to do in order to deceive Bob 
is to guess at random which was the box that Bob selected. Nevertheless, if Alice and Bob execute this protocol many times and Alice is cheating, she will be caught with high, with high probability. Okay, so by now the intuition on how one can define zero knowledge protocols using randomization techniques should be clear, and an immediate question to ask ourselves would be what can be randomized in public key encryption? And here is where we work a bit to define uh, the different forms of malleability, and so one can randomize the ciphertext, the messages, the encryption keys, and combinations. We worked with the following formal definitions, uh, some of them, uh, like the one of randomizability or random coin decryption, are well known in the literature, for others we find that uh, that was not the case. For these definitions we consider two flavors, computational and perfect randomizability. As a result, we base the constructions of our protocols on these generic randomization properties. Let's now move uh, to the protocol sections. We define simple cut and choose protocols. We prove their completeness, soundness, and perfect zero knowledge. For pit proof, we just require the ciphertext randomization property. For plain text equality, we require the randomization of the ciphertext and the randomization of messages. Finally, we also propose sigma protocols for plain text equality, but in this case, we require them to be key randomizable or random coin decryptable on top of the uh, two previous ones. I will now comment on the different scenarios that we consider, beginning with plain text equality. The first one was one in which both public keys are equal and the prover knows the corresponding secret key. Here we propose only verifier zero knowledge variants as well as full zero knowledge variants. The second scenario consists of having two different uh, public keys and assuming that the prover knows the corresponding secret keys. Here we propose the sigma protocols matchpeg and sigpeg. The last scenario we consider was like the previous one, but assuming that the prover knows the random coin used to encrypt the messages. And here we propose the protocol RSPEC, which is a straightforward adaptation from SIGPEC. Nonetheless, observe that the two scenarios are different from the application point of view. In the former, the prover acts as a receiver, whereas in the latest one, it acts as sender. Finally, going to the PIT proof, as you can see, we just consider the first scenario like in the PET case. Now let's dive into the protocol's constructions. The first one to consider will be HPNEC. It is the same as the example. Bob will pick a random coin, will choose one of the ciphertext, will randomize it and send it to Alice. Alice in turn will decrypt it and compare so that she can tell Bob her call on the, on the challenge. And so the corresponding theorem on the requisite scheme to be randomizable, as you can see. What about the protocol for plain text equality? Well, here Bob will need to randomize messages as well. The idea is that if there is a bisection in the message space, then Alice can compute it and answer Bob, which was the random message. This protocol follows from the fact that if both messages are equal, then it doesn't matter which one Bob chooses to randomize. So, in the corresponding theorem, you can see that now we add two more properties related to the message randomization. Finally, here we have the complete uh, version of the protocol RSPIC, and the idea is that Alice will randomize both ciphertext and commit to the randomized versions. This randomizing the messages and the ciphertext. Bob will then challenge her to prove that either both of the randomization decrypts to the same message or that she followed the protocol correctly. As I previously mentioned, this protocol can be turned into a sigpec if one replaces the random coin 
requirement by that one of the key randomizability. Again, the corresponding theorem makes use of all these properties. By now, you may be wondering how compatible the randomization definitions that I quoted before are with respect to well-known schemes. It looks like the right time to introduce the following table then. As you can see, it is not rare at all to find schemes compatible with the randomization of ciphertext, messages, or random coins. On the other hand, key randomizability is a less common property. At the right side, we have the list of all the protocols which can be used with encryption schemes secure under different security notions. And so, what about the efficiency of our generic protocols when compared to custom variants? We took Elgama as there, that there are efficient customized variants for similar settings compared with, and compared with them. This table presents the number of exponentiations and rounds for our protocols and considering the protocol from Chan Pedersen in the case of PET and Kameni Shub in the case of PIT. As you can see, they are not that far. We also implemented our protocols in Rust using plain Elgama. And in this second table, you can see that uh, the average running time in milliseconds when doing 128 repetitions for each protocol. This was to achieve the desired soundness error. All these numbers were gathered from a regular notebook from 2015 with no particular optimizations. This table also shows the practicality of the proposed protocols. Regarding the conclusions and, and future work, well, we provided formal definitions for randomizability properties. We gave intuitive constructions uh, for zero-knowledge uh, pet pit protocols, which is something very nice at the pedagogical level. And most of the time, zero-knowledge proof are introduced with examples like graph isomorphism or graph coloring, which are not very applicable to real-world problems. On the contrary, our protocols can easily be used to introduce zero knowledge proof to a broader audience with little technical background and with applications. Then, uh, the Sigma protocols can also be made non interactive via Fiat Shamil, which extends their application. And as I previously mentioned, all these protocols are applicable to real world problems in a plug and play manner. As you to work, First of all, we would like to design non-interactive variants for plain text inequality. Secondly, we would like to improve the number of rounds. And finally, we would like to build generic plain text inequality test, meaning comparison between ciphertext for which one knows that the plain text inequality holds. Well, it has been a great pleasure to deliver this talk of financial cryptography. Thank you very much for your time.